a respected uh, dignitaries, especially our August Research Persons, Professor Maninder Nath Thakur, Professor Ravi Ranjan, and keynote speaker Dr. Hashmi Pal Malik, guests from different institutions, colleagues, and my dear students, Assalamu Alaikum and very good afternoon to all of you. I am here to present a detailed report of the seminar titled Forgotten Heroes, Stories of Unsung Heroes, Freedom Fighters, organized by Department of Public Administration, GDC Tral, and sponsored by Indian Council of Social Science Research, New Delhi. Now I will give you a small this uh, excerpt from Prison Notebook, third, written by Subhash Chandra Bose what he calls about the heroes and quote non-heroes. Those who are considered good boys in society are in fact nothing but eunuchs. Neither in this world nor in any other has any great work been achieved or will any great work be done by these people. These boys somehow or other reduce their burden of sin and they follow the track of the most orthodox people like a herd of sheep throughout their most prosaic life. There is no taste of anything new or novel. There is no outburst of full-hearted laughter. There is no inspired self-sacrifice. One has to love new things. One has to grow mad for the unknown. One has to express himself in the free mind and under the open sky by breaking through all the barriers of life and by realizing them to the ground. And this was the spirit behind all those freedom fighters, whether they were sung or unsung, who finally their endeavors achieved freedom for India. And today, uh, in the technical session, we had first the Hashim Iqbal Malik Saab, whose keynote address was really wonderful. And he said that why we actually read about the uh, heroes, why we read about or why, when, why the idea of heroes come in our mind, whether sung or unsung. And he gave a full-fledged historical perspective and background that what led actually India to this fight for freedom. And it was a long history of, he explained, 6,000 years history that when people came from different areas of this world and started exploring the opportunities in fertile India. The people, they were uh, from, whether they were Afghans, whether they were from the Persia, but India was full of opportunities and agriculture was at its peak. And the main aim of the exploiter is to exploit resources and captivate these resources and then in a finished form sell to those who actually produce them. And then this invasion of India by all the people whether they were from the Central Asia, landlocked, and even Alexander came here, to only their aim was neither to influence the people, their religion, their society, or anything else, but their aim was to lure the, these rich resources. Then this uh, industrial revolution, which actually emerged from Europe, and America was already alive with them, and this industrial revolution finally culminated in coming of Britishers into India in the name of business. And all of you might be knowing that it was East India Company. They first embarked on the lands of this uh, India and finally subjugated that. And that is a long story. And now the people who were invited to business and they looted their rich resources from this place just to take it to this uh, England, get it finished there, whether it was workforce, whether it was this uh, uh, agricultural products or gold and uh, this jewels and all the valuable things, paintings, they took it to 
England. And many products came in a finished form to India, which was a big market for them, and their aim was only to make more and more profit. And now, this what is history and how it is related with that, and what will history do to us? And we must, before reading any particular text or any particular this uh, history book, we must first read the historian. And then we will come to know what can be the possible biases and what can be the possibilities of understanding the true sense of history. And he also vociferated that the unsung hero, the difference between sung hero and unsung hero is actually the sung hero is maybe he in his uh, uh, words he said they were actually very close to Britishers and a sung hero is born at a right place at right time and have right connections with the establishment. And there are thousands and thousands of people who lived in countryside and they were the hardcore supporters of freedom movement of India, but they were not remembered, they were forgotten the day they died, they were cremated or buried under this earth. And then he uh, went on speaking and he said that 1857 was the first revolt of India and this seminar is actually a rich tribute to those unsung heroes, whether their names have been this, uh, uh, named here or not, whether they are uh, uh, known by the people, known by the historians, known by the villagers or not, but this is actually a uh, tribute to all of them. And after that, we had the crux of this seminar, that is the uh, address of uh, the lecture of Professor Mahinder Nath uh, Thakurji. And he uh, actually, he began with his uh, lecture that who are the forgotten heroes? First we have to uh, simply uh, point them out that who are the uh, forgotten heroes and who history could document. And what were the impediments of historians that they couldn't this document the contribution of this freedom fighters. And then the solution he himself, he posed the problem himself and at the same time he uh, gave the very beautiful answer to this that we can still search for these unsung heroes and we can go to village. We have this narration there uh, when their very being lives in the narr narrations of these villagers in the form of uh, expression, narratives and, uh, and other resources which are still present and which come from heart, heart to heart, these are uh, this uh, uh, transformed from one generation to another generation. And he talked about a uh, hero of a novel, Vaman Das, and the, he was actually a Gandhian and uh, he was very hardcore fighter and protector of freedom and one night uh, he saw a blood cart coming from uh, in some neighboring uh, these uh, areas and he saw that some things, some illegal things are smuggled and positioned from one place to another place and finally to his surprise he was this aghast, flabbergasted by that, uh, that who were transporting these things, they were actually some local politicians. And see what can be the position of a sincere guy that who is with all his heart, with all his mind, he is backing a movement to free, to uh, breathe free, but uh, under his nose the same politicians who are vociferating these uh, slogans in the public but during the night the same politicians are doing illegal business. What can uh, be the position of that, uh, that, that, that boy? And then he is being killed. What happens to all the sincere people at the end? And uh, 
Still, he is remembered as a Chacharya peer because uh, the pages of history will not forget him because he was really a hero. He was a hero. That is why he became a sung hero. And this uh, this uh, this path was very difficult for the people to make him a sung hero. Then he was a forgotten hero. And this is what. Actually, these intellectuals cannot produce, they cannot actually preserve such things because they have some other uh, these preoccupations. And uh, now, this uh, common saying, story uh, in Bihar, he was 85 years of age and still the age and old age was not an impediment for him. That means, Jab Jage Tabi Savera and he woke up at the age of 85 and sacrificed it for the holy land. And this uh, small, small people, they took messages to remote areas. And why this? Uh, today we cannot understand that scenario, what Sir said, that today uh, small news is uh, out and within a jiffy, whole world knows about it. But we can, uh, how can we imagine the days when to pass one message from one village to another village, it was a very cumbersome, this task. But small people of small villages, they have done this thing at that moment. And even a small messenger, he is also an unsung hero. And then he quoted an example beautifully through stories. And the best part of this lecture was that everything was presented in the form of small stories. And this was a collection of short stories, I may call it. And this Atavai, this Dharma Bibi, well, how she sacrificed all her jewelry. And see, these uh, uh, women have uh, jewelry is very dear to uh, women folk. And to sacrifice that thing for the cause of nation, it is really a, a, a wonderful job. She has sold her to pay for, pay as a tax of people to offer to the authorities. And these things must be re recollected and brought in the text so that the other people can understand the value of these, this and meaning of freedom that it has not actually come out of blue and it is the consistent efforts of these people like this term BB or this common saying and all those people who will be mentioned later on. And uh, now the, uh, the, this, uh, this new ideas of inertia, this innovation, because nowadays humanity seems in this danger. And uh, man has made in last 400 years the weapons of mass destruction. And the sir very uh, uh, bluntly said that yes, every country is responsible for proliferation of these uh, weapons of mass destruction, destruction. But that has proved that this is not solution. And nowadays this Ukraine and Russia war has already declared it that this weapons of mass destruction are simply to wipe out the human population from the, this planet Earth. But we must, at the same time, talk about love, affection, emotion, and uh, the, we must, even the conflicts, there must be some kind of principles, and they, during this conflict is the idea of freedom, which is to dominate to all the communities, irrespective of caste, color, creed, religion, and th that's how that in Kashmir also, Kashmiri Sufis, Saintists, Rishis, Munis, they actually vociferate for the cordial relations with nature, and that is actually the essence of struggle. Geo or Ginedo. This concept Geo or Ginedo must be actually the uh, big slogan of all the human beings because and then sir actually the knowledge which we uh, actually tried knowledge is power and Mukhtar Saab said knowledge is power power corrupts absolute power corrupts absolutely and that means knowledge corrupts absolutely and because we can say that Elim hi seva hai this 
knowledge is actually the service. And now cutting the uh, long story short, I will uh, because uh, time has already uh, we have less time. And Ravi Ranjan ji, his uh, presentation was also marvelous, and how he connected these unsung heroes with the plural society. And he gave examples of Nizam Ali who was hanged, being a wrestler. He had nothing to do with the, 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 this Azadi or freedom for India. But still, when he got an opportunity, but he did not behave like the eunuch of so much Chandra Bose. He exerted and finally he was hanged. Or the Komal, although he turned to be an approver, but still he is an unsung hero. Or Khudiram Bose, who was also hanged because he threw bomb on the collector, who used to be a very a harsh tyrant. Or Makhfur Ajazi, or Mr. Safi Dawoodi, and so many others. Or this uh, Batak Mia, who was a cook, but see, at the same time, at, uh, what kind of decision he might have taken in a spur of the moment that whether I have to secure my employment, whether I have to remain very faithful for the Britishers and his Zamindal, or I have to walk and this seat with that tumult he might have gone at that moment when he finally decided to take the side of his nation, take the side of Gandhi because he knew that morality has to win over tyranny and finally he supported him, he alarmed him and he escaped that and what Gandhi we see today and this should have actually, this Gandhi should have vanished in Bihar long before. So heroship is not crafted. It is a real heroship that is where the generation from the society and which is the essence of composite culture. That's all.